could have saved him. It, it was working. Then I... And, no, not I. Something in me was appalled at the thought of helping someone weak. In that moment, he was food and nothing else. I killed an innocent man, while in my pocket is the shield of an officer that gave their life to save mine. I'm disgusted with myself. How can I keep living, knowing what just happened? Oh, the way he looked at me after I killed that thing. I'm a fucking monster. I pick up his handgun and raise it to my temple. I can't let myself hurt someone else again. The deafening roar of the pistol rings out in the room. Another body is added to today's count. One less monster in the world. One more tragic ending. At the far end of the first floor, Detective Dwyer hears the single shot. And he isn't the only one. Oh, God damn it! All this gunfire keeps attracting those horrid beasts. That sounded like it came from the morgue. Maybe someone's still alive. Dwyer makes his way carefully around the first floor with his weapon drawn. He passes turned over carts and bodies, stopping to check the vitals on each person he passes. Ah, so much innocence lost. Why is this happening? Dwyer stealthily enters the morgue. Upon seeing the bodies, he holsters his weapon and starts checking pulses. All these young men, dying in the line of duty. What a waste. Oh, no. He turns to see Mike face down with a gun in his hand. Huh. In a way, that was probably the better way out. I hope you did not suffer, young man. Dwyer reaches out and grabs the gun. But this may come in useful still. Mike slams his open palm onto the ground, flinging his body to his feet. Dwyer falls back onto the ground, staring wide-eyed. Mike's eyes are jet black. His teeth are jagged spikes and his fingers are elongated with long, slender claws at the end. Oh, what's going on? Run. Get out of here. Dwyer raises to his feet and takes off running back to the front entrance. He gets into the hallway and slides across the floor trying to stop. The other side of the hallway is blocked by another large lumbering boar. Ah. Dwyer spins and turns back to run in the other direction. The beast is in pursuit. He looks back, firing in the general direction. It's such a massive target, he makes four out of his five shots. The boar is significantly slowed down, but continues the chase. Dwyer gets to the front check-in for the hospital. It's an open area, with not much more than potted plants and a front desk. Dwyer goes to the front door to leave, but stops short of opening the door. Outside, there are what look like corpses stumbling about. Scattered through the ranks are several hulking behemoths. Outside is not an option. He scans the room. In the corner is a vending machine, and Dwyer squeezes between it and the wall, bringing a plant in front of him. He does his best to control his breathing, but the old man isn't used to this much physical activity anymore. The boar enters the room. The boar enters the room. It breathes deep and hard, trailing behind it thick, dark red blood. 
It's a limping. And the fact that he injured it at all gives Dwyer hope he can survive. He holds his breath and squats down behind the potted fern. He can make out the bottom half of the hulking beast as it shuffles sluggishly into the room. At one point, he has a perfect shot straight to the back of its head, less than ten feet away. He slowly reaches for his gun, then realizes the discharge might draw the attention of the horrors outside. Short steps echo from the hallway back to the morgue. The boar turns its attention to the hallway and heads back towards the morgue. Dwyer can hear the sounds of a struggle between the boar and something else. He nervously peers back and forth from the hallway to the windows outside. The horrors beyond the door seem to not notice the sounds coming from inside the building. A large thud. Was that the boar or something else hitting the ground? Dwyer contemplates making a run for it until he hears footsteps. They aren't heavy like the beast. From behind the plant, he makes out bloody burnt jeans and black sneakers. Mike falls to his knees and vomits up a sticky black (laughs) fluid and then falls onto his side. (laughs) Young man! The detective leaps from behind cover and rushes to Mike. He kneels down and grabs his shoulders, then drops Mike and falls back on his ass. His palms are burning. Dwyer is slack-jawed. His pale blue eyes reflect in Mike's solid black ones. Mike's fingers are stretched and pointed into grotesque claws. There is a large hole in the side of his temple where the bullet punctured. The detective reaches for his gun. Wait! Hold on! The detective pauses, then reluctantly puts his gun down at his side and just watches. Mike's eyes gradually return to a normal brown. His fingers compress back to a human length, and his facial structure returns to normal while the bullet hole closes. Mike rolls over onto his side and vomits more black liquid. It steams and bubbles. Inside the pile, a bullet is visible. Oh. Oh. For, For some reason... Those, uh, those big ones make me sick. How are you? What just happened? <coughs> oh, it's a lot, uh, a lot to explain. <coughs> I'm not even sure how to explain some of it. <coughs> uh, just to clarify, you're, <coughs> you, you're not dead, right? What? Like, uh... Like, you didn't die, and now you're here or something like that. You mean, like we've gone to another life? No, no, I I haven't received so much as a scratch. But you were dead. I found your body. I'm holding the gun you used. Hmm, there goes that theory. Maybe this is my own personal hell, and he really isn't here. I mean, look at him. He's completely unhurt. How can that be? Mike reaches up and touches his temple. Nothing. Like it never even happened. Do you... do you have bullets left? Mm, Yes, a few. Save them. These big ones have tough skin. It's almost pointless with a handgun. I watched the SWAT team shoot the shit out of one, and it took all of them out. Well, almost all of them. Dwyer looks into the hallway at the remains of the boar. Mm, Good to know. Whatever you did to that thing seems to work better anyway. You're staying with me. I'm going to need that. Uh, I don't think that's safe. Oh? When that happens and I... uh, change... I'm not me anymore. It's not safe. Dwyer looks at his pistol... And then out the front door. It would seem I'm out of better options. 
Let's get to the roof and see if we can't plot a better course for exiting this building. The two head to the stairwell. Once they reach the door for the roof access, Dwyer turns to Mike. We don't know if there's anything up there. Be it more creatures or people hiding. We need to be quiet and unseen. If someone thinks we're here to save the day, they may become hysterical and draw unwanted attention to us. Mike nods, and they slowly open the door. don't like that. Mike and Detective Dwyer get to the roof access door. After peeking out the door, the detective closes it and turns to Mike. I don't think that's going to work. What do you see? There's several bodies. They look like they were on display. It's very busy, very red. I think we should look for another way. Whatever's up there can't be worse than what we saw on the ground, right? At least not as many. Who knows, maybe I can take it. I almost forgot about your... condition. Mike stands and moves to the door. The detective grabs him by the wrist. Wait. Uh, On the ground? We have a running chance. What am I supposed to do if you can't handle whatever's up here? Damn it, you're right. But we don't even know for sure something's still up here. It could have left. Let me take a quiet look around. If it's nothing, I'll come get you. Just stay here. Mike tears his arm free and opens the door. The rooftop is a massacre. Bodies with the skin flayed off are displayed in large structures made of bone and flesh. Piles of huge bones from an unknown source are scattered about. The world is illuminated by a blood-red sun. It sits in the center of the sky. On the ground, Mike can hear the sound of creatures moving about. He looks around before moving to the edge and peers down. It's worse than they thought. What they could see from the front entrance was just one of many groups of horrors. The pale corpses shuffle about sluggishly. Their skin is a ghostly white, and they move without purpose in loose groups. Walking among each group is a single hulking red and black beast, short-faced with long, gangly fangs hanging over each other. Bright white eyes, thick long reptilian tail. They stomp through with purpose as if they were in charge of the horde of pale figures around them. Mike takes a short breath and slowly backs away from the edge. Even if we get out of the building, we'll be hiding or running as soon as we're out of here. Mike continues to look around. Careful not to make noise by stepping over the bones and debris lying about. There are large claw marks scarring random ducks and fans around the roof. In a corner with a raised exhaust fan, there's what look like clumps of hair and skin together in a large pile. Mike approaches to find a young child motionless in the center. Her eyes are pale. She is gone. There is no one and nothing else up here. Mike approaches the door and signals to Dwyer. He steps up and stares wide-eyed at the view on the ground. Then Mike guides him over to the child. What do you think this means? She isn't dismembered and on display like the others. It almost looks like they tried to make it comfortable for her. Dwyer looks at the girl. 
looks around the area, then to the adjacent rooftops. This is not for her comfort. We're in something's den. Dwyer studies the collection of scalped hair and skin together. This isn't for her comfort. We're in something's den. He points to a building at the end of the street. It has similar grim decor. And on top of a grisly throne of the dead sits a spindly white figure. I can't see it too well. Is that a person? The figure stands straight up and walks to the edge of the building, slung over its shoulders what look like two large white bags. What's it doing? The figure squats down, then propels itself into the air with a mighty leap, spreading what now are clearly wings. Oh great, they can fucking fly too. It flies the opposite direction till it is no longer visible. Well, we can't stay up here now. Mm, not that, now that we know that. Our best bet is to find something fortified. Like an army base. Or a underground bomb shelter. Hopefully some other survivors that are armed and organized. What about me? What do you mean? I can't be around people. Especially armed ones trying to survive. My boy, you're more equipped to deal with these horrors than most of us now. No one's gonna see it that way. Yeah, if I save them, uh, they'll love me for a second. I don't see that fear in their eyes. Every time I look at them, it'll take some explaining. I suppose there'll be some irrational people. Some? You almost fucking shot me! You! Mr. So Calm and Insightful! Both men snap their necks around to see the white figure land on the other end of the rooftop. It is a naked woman. Her skin is pale white like a ghost. She's emaciated, making her skeletal structure visible. Long, stringy white hair covers most of her face and bare chest. She moans and glares her milky white eyes at the two of them, then looks over the side of the building. As the woman steps to the edge... She turns her back, exposing long, white, fleshy wings tipped with claws like a bat. Slowly move to the door. The two back up quietly, never breaking concentration on the woman. Dwyer gets to the door first and feels for the handle. He slowly opens the door. Slowly? Carefully. She lets out an ear-piercing call. And it's answered from below. Oh, fuck! Run, boy! The two explode into the hallway and start flying down the staircase. Wait! Wait! I have to kill her! We don't have time for that! We have to get out of here! They're already coming! If if I leave her alive, who knows what else she could do? Boy, we don't have time for this! They could be here any moment! We have to go! Hurry! The two continue to haul ass down the staircase. Wait! Go back! The entrance to floor one is packed tight with shambling pale bodies. Mike and the detectives stop mid-stride and just watch them. (laughs) <laughs> they're just slowly shuffling about uh, they're not very threatening to be honest good that is at least in our favor let's go back up to floor two and cut across to the other side Dwyer steps in front and climbs the stairs Mike stares at the white bodies moving around on the first floor. 
the skin, those eyes, it's so familiar, they're dead, what is happening? Mike and Detective Dwyer open the door to level two. There is one lone shambling corpse at the end of the hallway. Uh, good. We can use that. They seem slow enough. Let's find something quieter than a gun. And test the most efficient way to, uh, kill them. They go through the nearest doors and closets and gather back in the hallway. Well, I found a mop handle. If I break the tip and make it sharp, I think I might be able to do the trick. What about you? I found a crowbar? <laughs> this is heavier than I imagined one would be. You're going to have to get kind of close with that. Hmm. Well, better you than me. <laughs> you almost sound excited. Don't be so bashful. Sometimes we can enjoy our chores. And with that, the detective started walking at the corpse. Hey! It turns around and is impaled through the heart by the broken broomstick. To no effect at all. The corpse flails about in no particular direction. Well, that... Didn't go how I thought. Dwyer reaches out and grabs the handle, then puts his foot on the middle of its chest and pulls it loose. The handle comes out with little resistance, and the corpse falls to the floor, snapping its wrist in the process. Let me try this again. This time the sharp end of the handle is thrust through the left eye cavity until it comes out the back end of the skull. Holy hell! It's still moving! The recently impaled corpse lay on its back, flailing its limp broken arm with a broom handle coming out of its left eye socket that's now discharging a thick black goo. Are you fucking kidding me? Dwyer removes the handle and starts feverishly stabbing the body over and over. <laughs> Whoa, 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 come on, relax, look. Alright, let me try. Almost an hour of time passes. Detective Dwyer and Mike are sitting on opposite sides of the hallway, facing each other. In the center is the dismembered corpse. It's been broken down into one entire leg, the other leg attached to the pelvis and torso. Both arms are broken at the wrist and the head. Each separated portion moving of its own free will. Mike and the detective use their weapons now to poke the moving parts toward the center, like cattle herding. This is pointless. No, no matter what we do to it, the fucker keeps squirming. Just let me barbecue it. <sighs> what good does that do me? I need to figure out a way to kill them. What if we get separated? Mike stands up and walks down the hallway. Now where do you think you're going? I'm just gonna look around and see if I can't find something else you could use. Mike looks through the different rooms of the hospital, searching for what could be a useful instrument of death. No! No! Please! Mike takes off running towards the distant screams. He comes to a door that's heavily marked in dark red blood. He looks through the blood-smeared sight glass and can make out a body on the floor and one moving away from something large. 
<laughs> Someone, please help! Mike enters the room. Mike kicks in the door, cracking the wall behind it. He enters the room with claws out and fangs bared. The creature turns to meet him. It is rust-colored, with a human-like torso. It has long appendages tipped with giant stingers where arms should be. Its face is void of eyes or facial features, yet Mike gets the feeling it's staring directly at him. It lets out a hiss exposing a tiny circular mouth with rows of teeth and slithers at Mike. It's too fast. The creature punctures Mike's chest and sends him crashing through the door out into the hallway. The impact cracks tile and black liquid is forced out of Mike's mouth. He tries to sit up and is met again with the business end of the stingers. It pierces his left eye and exits the back of his skull, pushing out pieces of brain and bone. Mike falls to the ground a bloody mess. Hey! Get away from him! Dwyer shoots the creature in its head. Bright green liquid oozes out, and it charges Dwyer. He fires two rounds before the clip is empty. Dwyer puts his hands up and braces for impact. You took my eye. Mike is holding the creature back with both hands wrapped around its stinger arms. He puts his foot in the center of its back. This might sting. And tears off the limbs. Mike thrust both stingers into the back side of the creature's head until they protrude out through its mouth. The monster hisses and gurgles and wriggles violently on the floor. <laughs> Dwyer looks on in horror at Mike's monstrous form. Mike pushes his claws into the creature and begins to feed. Dwyer covers his nose and mouth. Ugh. Jesus Christ, the smell is horrendous. The creature explodes, shooting steaming hot flesh and boiling liquids everywhere. Oh, God damn it. I'm never going to get used to this. Is this going to happen all the time? Mike snarls and bears his fangs at Dwyer. Dwyer quickly exits and goes into the hospital room with no follow-up questions. Outside in the hallway, he can hear Mike moving further away. Dwyer looks around the room and sees a face looking at him from under the bed. You're okay. It's safe now, for the time being. I'm sure there are more nearby, so it's best we stay quiet as we can. Mike can handle himself. My name is Thomas Dwyer. I'm a detective. What is your name? My name's William. <laughs> Did you forget already, Tommy? Uh, Tom, what the fuck is going on here? Oh, Bill. You're a welcome sight. Bill stands up and brushes off his clothes. Oh man, thank you so much. Bill lays a big bear hug on Dwyer. <laughs> Hey, Tom, you said Mike can handle himself. You name that thing after Mikey? That's a bit of a weird tribute, brother. Bill, that is Michael. <laughs> no, no, no. I saw his body in the morgue. He was gone, dude. Right before I had to run like hell, that, that thing's been chasing me for hours. I'm too fat for this shit. Something terrible has happened to that child, but it's keeping him alive. It's kept me alive, and now you. 
They both move out of the room and look down the empty hallways. Do we go after him? He's going to come back. I'm sure of it. Well, pretty sure. Huh. I sure hope so. Bill and Tom have been taking watch for a few hours back and forth looking for signs of Mike. You sure he's coming back? We haven't heard any new sounds in an hour. Not a peep, no fire, explosions, or just that thing down the hallway chomping at the air. Dwyer looks at the crowbar in his hand, then slides it across the floor to Bill. Yeah, you try your luck. I pulled the goddamn thing apart. It's still moving. No shit can't say I'm surprised with all the weird shit I've seen lately. You're telling me. I'm most concerned about how few living people I've seen. It seems whatever's happening, no one got any warning. <laughs> you ain't kidding. I haven't seen this many bodies even at work. And what about Mikey? He hasn't explained anything to me. I suspect he knows just as much as us. And you trust him? He saved my life. He could have killed me easily by now, and he hasn't. He shows concern for other people. These aren't traits of an evil person. Um, he, he did just eat the Scorpion King looking motherfucker out there, right? You, you saw that too, right? I, I'm not crazy? Wait, listen. Do you hear that? Uh, I don't hear shit. Exactly. It's not moving anymore. Dwyer starts down the hallway, and Bill reluctantly follows him. They come up to the dismantled corpse. It's motionless in a large puddle of black goo. Dwyer looks puzzled, and taps it with his toe. No movement. Then he gives it a hard kick. Nothing. It's dead. Now how the hell did it just decide to die? I rammed a hole through its torso and brain. It acted like nothing happened. We dismembered it. All the parts kept moving. But you bleed for a few hours, then you call it quits! Dwyer kicks the head and it rolls down the hallway. Hey, all right there, Pele. I mean, this is victory, kinda. You know, that they can be killed in the sort of way that a corpse can die, you know? Dwyer stands and marches back to the room. Hey, Tommy, wh where are you going? What's going on? Pack whatever you can find. We need to go get Mike. We're not safe alone. Bill and the detective go through drawers and cabinets, putting small supplies in medical waste bags. You'd think somewhere there would be a little booze hidden. We must stay alert. We cannot allow our judgment to falter, not even for a second. Jeez. You must be a lot of fun at parties. Dwyer cracks a smile, and the two walk out into the hallway. Then start in the last direction they saw Mike go. If we survive this, nothing sounds better to me than a comfortable chair, a smoke, and some scotch. Hey, I'm not much of a scotch guy myself, but I'd drink about anything right now. If we can get to my house or the station, we'll have that drink. You keep booze at the station? I've been ten years sober. I have an unopened bottle that was gifted to me from someone before I quit. I guess I was holding on to it for a rainy day. The apocalypse seems like a good reason, though. Is that what you think this is? Something biblical? I'm not a religious man. In my line of work, it's hard to have faith. I don't know what this is. Biological warfare? A oh, virus, who knows? All that matters at the moment is staying alive. You got family out there? No. You? 
Yeah, my ex-wife and her three-year-old son, Joseph. They're in Florida on vacation right now. Uh, and they're not answering my calls. I hope they're okay. She's smart. Uh, she'll find a way to keep them safe. The pair turn down the corner and get to the stairwell. Dwyer approaches the door and looks through the window. He went this way. They go through the door. The stairs are littered with burnt corpses of the white undead. They are motionless. It's safe. He cleared the way. Dwyer and Bill descend the stairs, stepping over burnt chunks. You never, you never really get used to this smell. It's not the worst, but these guys have a unique funk. It's <laughs> all their own. Dwyer is covering his mouth and nose. They get to the first floor and peek through the window. Bodies are everywhere. No signs of life. The detective opens the door to the first floor. It is a sea of carnage. Putrid burnt remains and a spicy death odor that stings the eyes. Oh, oh, I'm going to throw up. Oh, let's get out of here while we can. The two quickly and carefully weave through the dead and reach the broken doors at the entrance. A quick look outside shows that there's nothing around. Stay close to me. The station's a few blocks from here. We're going to have to be quiet and quick. Keep your backs to the building. Bill nods. They both take a breath and then step outside of the hospital. station. The front doors are torn from the building. Rotting parts of officers and civilians litter the ground. Dwyer approaches a leg with a holster on it, and he removes the pistol. We're gonna need bigger guns. Let's try the armory downstairs. Are you sure you wanna... you wanna go in there? We don't have much of a choice. We're sitting ducks without these guns. If there's any chance that someone survived, they'll be holed up down there. There's MREs and cots, too. We could use a break from this nomadic lifestyle. Yeah, all right, fine, fine. Let's just uh, stop standing around outside. <laughs> I can see more of them moving down the street. The pair walk over the bodies and into the police station. Inside desks are turned over, bullet casings are everywhere, and many officers lay in their own blood. There are two boar creatures dead in the center of the room. Their bodies are riddled with bullet wounds, and one of them is missing an arm. Did you... did you know these guys? Yes. Dwyer looks at a few of the officers' faces then raises his hand in the direction of the stairs to the lower floor. Quietly. They cross the floor and get to the stairwell door. It's locked. Well, that's a good sign. There might be people alive down there. My desk. I have keys in there. Dwyer goes over to where his desk was and finds it turned on its side. He goes through the drawers, checking one by one. He grabs his keys and an unopened bottle of Johnny Walker Blue. Dwyer walks over and hands the bottle to Bill. Uh, what say we take the edge off first? Who knows what we're going to find down there? Bill opens the bottle and raises it to Tom. Uh, a toast. A drink with the closest of friends. For if we meet our bitter end... Then on this day, let it be known. We did it together. We weren't alone. Salute. Ah, uh, that was very fitting of the situation. Is that something you've said before? Yeah, my father was an undertaker. Everything he said had a dusting of morbid to it. 
Ugh. Fucking poetic, though, right? Dwyer takes the bottle from Bill. He looks into it for a moment. <laughs> and all this time, I thought this is what would be killing me. Dwyer drinks long and hard. Hey, pal, come on now. I'm gonna need you functional. Dwyer hands the bottle back to Bill and puts his keys into the lock. It turns and clicks open. The door to the stairwell opens. Tom and Bill are staring at steps that disappear into the dark. Of course, the light's out. Let me get a flashlight. Thomas gets a flashlight off a fallen officer and mumbles something to him. Tom turns on the light and lets Bill walk past him down the stairwell. Tom turns and locks the door. We can't risk anyone getting down here that shouldn't be. It's a concrete hallway with small offices on opposite sides. They each contain a computer and filing cabinet. Towards the end of the hallway are several small holding cells that are currently unoccupied. This was designed for use in an emergency. Storms, war, monsters. It's capable of holding and feeding 20 criminals and 20 officers and family. They get to the end of the hallway, and they're faced with a straight-ahead door, a door to their left, and a door to their right. Here we go. The door to the left is your living quarters. To the right is the bathroom, showers, and lockers. So, uh, what's, what's straight ahead, then? Dwyer smiles and reaches for the handle. This is the best part. It's the food and dining. Dwyer opens the door to the white shambling undead. He quickly shuts the door. Damn it! <sighs> so help me God if they've ruined the Fig Newtons. The door to the living quarters opens, and several officers point shotguns at Bill and Tom. Wait, oh, wait, fuck. my name is Thomas Dwyer. I'm a detective here. Holy shit, it's Tommy. The officer lets the gun hang at his side as he gives Dwyer a hug with the other arm. You're a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> I can't believe you made it. Barely. Let's get inside, and you can fill me in on the situation. Yeah, and uh, maybe you boys uh, have some clean pants in there, too. Jesus. They enter the living space. Cots are filled with bandaged people, some looking more grim than the others. In the far corner is a small pile of dry food supplies. We got a few of the dry foods out before those things got through the pantry. Haven't been able to kill them. Don't know if you've noticed, but one of them has a machete halfway through its neck, and it's walking around like nothing happened. Yes, I had a similar situation. We pulled it apart limb from limb. It was still moving. Hours later, it just stopped. Seemingly on its own. How long has the machete been in it? Eh, about a few days. We went back and put a bullet in its head, too. Nothing. Nice rack on the female one, though. We must first secure the area. Then figure out if any of the food's been contaminated. Uh, hey guys. I, I gotta use a little girl's room, uh, real quick. Anything I can, you know, take with me? There's paper in the stall. Okay, so I can throw two-ply at them, good. I mean a gun or something. The area's locked down. There's nothing without a key getting in. Oh, uh, your pantry crew doesn't inspire confidence. Look, princess, I can get you a bedpan if you're too afraid. Bill turns and walks to the door. I'm, g I'm gonna pick up some fresh tampons while I'm out, too. Sounds like Flo is heavy. The door closes behind him, and Bill walks out into the hallway. <laughs> Thank you. 
Bill walks out into the hallway, passing the door to the food storage and walks into the locker rooms. I can get you a bedpan, princess. <sighs> bah, fungal. Wow. These showers are nicer than I expected. Less like a locker room and more like a resort. Bill admires the sinks, the long oak benches, and opaque sliding glass doors on the individual showers. This is set up nicer than what I have at home. Is this where my fucking tax money goes to? Bill turns on the shower and marvels at the water pressure. What the fuck? My shower's like an old man taking a piss. Bill turns off the water and walks into a stall. All right. Test drive. Outside the locker room, the shuffling of feet can be heard faintly in the next room. I wonder what they do in there. Are they eating the food? Oh my god, do they shit in there? There's an explosion followed by chaos. The door to the lockers opens, and Bill hears feet shuffling in. Oh shit. Uh -uh. Bill pulls up his pants and looks for a weapon. The stall is clean, and everything is bolted down. I literally have only two ply to defend myself. Bill can hear them brushing up against lockers and benches. He looks through the crack of the stall. There are two pale corpses by the lockers. Bill picks up the toilet paper and tosses it the other side of the room. Bill watches the two make their way towards the sound of the soft tissuey impact. Once they are far enough for Bill's liking, he moves from the stall and makes a run to the door. He gets to the door and flings it open, only to be confronted by an onyx black beast with red eyes. No, 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 no! Bill slams the door and turns the lock. The sound alerts the two horrors and they turn their attention from the toilet paper to Bill. Bill can hear the voices of Dwyer and Jerry among a hail of bullets. The horrors are slowly closing in on Bill. He looks at the machete lodged in one of their torsos and tries to collect himself. (sighs) This is it, William. Time to be a fucking hero! Bill grits his teeth and runs straight at the two undead. Bill breathes in deep and takes another run at the ghouls. He hacks the neck and arms on the first go-through. Next time, he goes for the Achilles' heel, hoping to slow them down. I don't have much left in me. Bill is exhausted. He's dehydrated, and his vision is getting blurry. His arms are so sore from hacking at the bone countless times. Bill takes a poorly aimed reckless swing makes a gash in one ghoul's thigh before slamming into a locker. Bill drops the machete. He falls back on his ass and leans against the lockers behind him. The banging on the door is increased as the door starts to crumble under the force behind it. Bill closes his eyes and breathes deep. You rapscallion. Bill opens his eyes to see Detective Dwyer fending off the ghouls. Dwyer swinging a medium-sized short sword with a golden circular hilt. Ah. Bill watches the detective dismember the bodies as he fades in and out of consciousness. Bill's sight goes dark, and he sleeps. Dwyer doesn't finish dismembering the bodies until they stop moving. He picks up the first parts that stop 
and looks at the insides. They've turned from a deep black to a pale white fleshy color. He's right. Son of a bitch, he's right. Here come more! Dwyer turns around in time to see a boar rush the other way into the living quarters. That should be no problem for Mike. I'll stay with William till it's safe to bring him out there. In the doorway stands a large onyx beast, cut up and injured. Dwyer draws his sword and readies it. He slowly steps backwards and away from the blood puddle so not to slip. The beast advances and Dwyer swings. His shoes are still coated with the black goo, causing him to lose footing and swing high. He cuts into the eyes of the monster. It shrieks and drags its claws across Dwyer's chest, opening him up to the ribcage. Mike enters the room. He charges over to the onyx beast and crushes its skull between his clawed hands. Mike lets out an inhuman cry as his body contorts back to human proportions. He goes over to Bill to check his vitals. He... he doesn't look hurt. I think... I think he just passed out. What... what happened here? I think I bit off more than I could handle. But he was right. He was right about the blood. Dwyer slinks over and passes out. Mike runs over and checks for a pulse. He's still alive. I can do it. I can do it this time. I know I... I can. I have to. Mike is hovering his hands over Dwyer's heart, waiting. He remembers what happened the last time he tried to heal someone. He remembers that uncontrollable urge that took over. I know I can do this. I'm the one in control. Mike presses his hands on Dwyer's heart and begins. Mike's hands tingle and his body feels warm no response from Dwyer yet. Mike concentrates, and he can feel the exchange happening. Dwyer's chest inflates, and Mike can see the flesh and bone begin to heal themselves. All right, this is good. Come on, nice and easy now. Dwyer's eyes start to move rapidly behind the closed lids. He's breathing normally, and he begins to speak. Don't strain yourself. Let me get you healed first. I knew it. I fucking knew it. Jerry unloads a shotgun blast into the back of Mike's head. The shot fragments Mike's cranium and shoots boiling hot black liquid everywhere. Mike's body falls lifeless to the floor, and Dwyer abruptly sits up. Oh good, you're still with us. I came in here, and I saw you and that Bill guy out for the count with that freak show jamming his hands into your chest. Dwyer stands up and says nothing. Then he looks at Mike on the ground. Then Bill. Then he exits the room without a word. Jerry follows Dwyer into the pantry. So, uh, one of you guys took care of those two in the pantry, I see. Explains why he wasn't any help. When shit got weird upstairs. Hey, Tommy, you holding up all right? I'm fine. Just uh, rattled. And so hungry. Dwyer reaches for a handful of peanuts and eats them as if he was breathing, before tearing the lid off a box of individually wrapped cookies. 
<laughs> you fall off the wagon again? <laughs> no more healthy and sober Tommy, huh? Back to deep fryer Dwyer. <laughs> uh, no one can blame you at a time like this. Look, Tommy, I'm just glad to see you alive. I'm going to go check on that Bill guy. You do your thing. Jerry walks off to help Bill back into the living quarters. Jerry takes great delight in slapping Bill to consciousness. Hey, wake up, princess! Then, a few choice insults and some help from the other survivors get Bill safely into a cot. Once inside the living quarters, Jerry gives the breakdown to the men. All right, listen. They're fucking dead. Tommy and I cleared the top floors and chained the door so it won't last long, but you know what? We're safe down here for the moment. Once everyone's healed up enough to move, we gotta get the fuck out of here. That chain up there is not gonna stop them, especially if they come with another group of things. What about the two in the pantry? Actually, we got Needle Dick over there to thank for squashing them. Princess has some balls after all. <laughs> Bill slowly raises his head to give Jerry the finger. Uh, where's Thomas? Tommy's in the pantry right now. We may have a return of the deep fryer Dwyer. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? Eh, before he got sober, uh, let's just say he was, uh, <laughs> twice the man I am. <laughs> Dwyer enters the room, breathing heavily. His eyes are sunken with a deep red ring around them. He's sweating, and very vascular. I'm so goddamn hungry. Holy shit, Tommy! What happened to you? Dwyer is covered in crumbs, and the front of him is soaked in various drinks and sauces. His breathing is labored, and he stares blankly at the ground before him. I'm so hungry. Bill sits up. Jerry and another man walk over to Dwyer. Oh, wait, wait, wait! Don't touch him! Something's not right! Bill's words are drowned out by Jerry's screams as Dwyer bites through Jerry's wrist. My fucking hand! Dwyer bites halfway through the soft flesh and bone, making it easier for him to tear the hand off completely. Jerry grabs his bleeding stump and falls backwards. Everyone looks on in horror as Dwyer crunches through the hand and swallows it. Oh, this is different. This will fill me. Dwyer walks towards a man laying in a cot and reaches his hand out towards him. This flesh will satiate me. Mike grabs Dwyer by the wrist and turns him around. Stop! You don't have to do this. Dwyer backhands Mike onto the ground. I have to. You don't have to! You can fight this! You have to fight this! Jerry shoots his sidearm, hitting Mike in the chest and knocking him down. Jerry fires again, catching Dwyer in the ear. Dwyer's ear is a mangled, bloody mess barely hanging on. What did that freak do to you? <laughs> what did you do to my hand? Dwyer reaches up and removes his injured ear. Then eats it. Still 
hungry. Dwyer walks towards Jerry and is shot in the side by another man. Then Jerry fires into Dwyer's face, taking out one of his eyes. <laughs> Dwyer stops walking and slumps over. He starts dry heaving until he throws up. <laughs> He throws up the bullets. I believe these are yours. By now, everyone that can walk is backed up into the room further away from the scene. Only Dwyer, Jerry, Mike, and a bandaged man in a nearby cot remain. Jerry struggles to load his shotgun with his one remaining arm, while blood gushes out of the other. He's losing a lot of blood. It's not long before he will go into shock. Dwyer takes a few steps at Jerry before being grabbed around the ankle. Dwyer turns to see Mike, black-eyed and fanged. Don't you fucking walk away from me. drags his clawed hand down Dwyer's leg, opening the flesh to the bone. Dwyer doesn't even flinch, and continues to march forward with his hands out and his mouth a gaping maw. Mike grabs onto both ankles and pulls Dwyer down. He puts his foot in the middle of Dwyer's back and pulls the legs off. Dwyer lets out an inhuman bellow before forcing all of his weight onto his arms and making a dash at the man in the cot. Jerry manages to finally load his shotgun and gets one shot into Dwyer's right shoulder, knocking him down. Mike runs over to Dwyer's body and sinks his claws deep into the skin. I don't know what the fuck you think you're about to do. I have to end this now before he's stuck like me. Who do you think you're kidding? You made him this way. You think I'm going to fucking trust you? Jerry pulls his pistol and fires directly into Mike's forehead. Mike is staggered and falls to his knee. Hey, what are you doing? Mike is trying to save us here, you dumb fuck. Bill tries to wrestle the gun from Jerry's hand. Bill is no match for Jerry, and he is overpowered. During the chaos, Dwyer manages to crawl his way out of the room. Mike struggles to his feet in an attempt to go after him. Jerry raises his shotgun at Mike. Go ahead. Take one more step. Mike tightens his fists and looks away from Jerry. I'm leaving. Just let me go. The man in the cot's name is Derek, and he speaks to Mike. Please, you have to listen. Mike pauses, then walks over to him, still clenching his fists. They can't keep them out (laughs) they can't keep us safe you have to help he's a fucking monster we can't trust him no stop it he's here to help us like he helped Tommy that'll be you next he feeds on the weakest like a fucking leech Mike's fists begin to shake and slowly blood trickles from them Mike's eyes go black and his skin begins to tighten up He's losing control over his emotions. Look at him. Would any of you feel safe with this freak show living among us? He doesn't belong around people. He's not a monster. He just needs... (coughs) Mike is wrapping his hand around Derek's throat and holding him upright out of the cot. Yes, a monster. That's exactly what I am. I shouldn't be around you. (laughs) Isn't that the rat telling the snake it's time to leave? Oh, you should tremble more than that when I'm around. 
Mike places his other hand on Derek's head and cracks his neck open like a Pez dispenser. The group gasps as Derek's blood spurts out over the ground and Mike's face. And I've tried. You made it clear. I'm not your guardian angel. I'm some fucking abomination. And I will give in to it. You fear me now? I will show you true terror. I'm not your savior. I am a poor 